if you don't like someone's lifestyle or you don't like their appearance, why can't you just keep it to yourself? Do you have, like, a medical condition where unless you make someone feel bad about themselves, at least one person every day, you'll go into anaphylactic shock? And some people seem to treat them stating these things aloud as if, oh, well, that's just my beliefs. And I'm like, yeah, but everyone has beliefs that are negative about other people. Everyone's got these judgments we make. We don't say them out loud because it's kind of fucked up to say them out loud. Why do you have to say it out loud? I mean, yeah, you, you have the right to say it. You know, you're not going to get arrested for it, thankfully. We live in a country with, you know, our First Amendment protects us. But why do you feel it necessary to, to do this? I don't understand it. I mean, some people almost make it sound like, you know, being an asshole is a protected lifestyle. It's a, it's a protected class or something, and it's weird. I mean, if you publicly spout off negative judgments and everything that you hate about people that are around you, you can expect that people will respond just as negatively, if not even more negatively, than you were. And no, you don't get to have a pity party when people dogpile you after you said something incredibly hateful or, or judgmental. It doesn't matter if it's your most deeply held belief. It doesn't matter if it's one of your guiding principles. If you know it has a lot of negative connotations, why don't you keep it to yourself like Muslims typically do in this country? Think about that for a moment. Muslims in this country know not to talk about these things publicly because they will get, you know, a lot of flack for it. So they keep it to themselves. And I wish most religious people who have these kinds of beliefs that people know damn well are hateful beliefs according to people who don't have those beliefs. Yeah, why can't you just keep them to your fucking self? What is the problem? There's a certain amount of politeness we have to have when we're out in public. You know, and people are talking about all these internet places. It's the public square. Well, I mean, if, if someone goes off on some rant in, in real life about how, you know, gay people are abominations and degenerates and stuff, if someone goes off in real life about that kind of thing, they're going to get a lot of pushback. You know, and you, you should expect the same pushback when you say it online. And if you state these kind of beliefs in your workplace, yeah, you're probably going to get fired. And if you state them online, well, yeah, people are probably going to try to cancel you. You might get censored and you might lose your job. I mean, why is it so hard to keep those kind of opinions to yourself? What, what's the deal? And if you take these kinds of social rules as a challenge, you know, where you try to find new and inventive ways of stating those opinions in a way that doesn't get you in trouble. I mean, you've got some real issues, buddy. I mean, at that point, it's not about you trying to prove that your beliefs aren't hurtful. It's really about you trying to find new and inventive ways of hurting someone while saying that you're not. And that's really fucked up, regardless of how you try to rationalize it. Nevertheless, you no longer get to publicly tell gay people that they're abominations or degenerates. Tell women that they should take a supportive, submissive role. Tell men that they should try to meet impossible masculine standards. Tell trans people that they're mentally ill. Tell black people that there's no such thing as white privilege in white majority countries. I mean, there's obviously a few more, but these are kind of the basics. You don't get to say those things anymore without some negative consequences. You know, again, being an asshole doesn't make you a protected class. You're free to believe whatever you want. But the moment you go out of your way, to try to make someone feel bad for having a lifestyle that you or your God disapproves of, including if you're pushing the notion that women should take a submissive role, then it's no longer just a belief. It's abusive. It's oppressive. And it's really not going to be tolerated in society anymore. And yes, I did just suggest that it's abusive, or at least oppressive, to suggest that women should take a submissive role. You know, that they should embrace that sort of thing. Oh, embrace, when you know your place, you, you can embrace it and, and work within that. And it's just like, you shouldn't put people in these boxes. 
Oh, but when, once you once you know your place, then then you can you can find yourself easier. And it's just like, uh, no, no, no. We we should allow people to make their own purpose. We shouldn't shove a purpose down everyone's throats. No. But you know, telling women they should embrace a submissive role is essentially saying they don't really have fully have their own agency. It's kind of the notion that their opinions should always take the back seat to men. You know, oh, women can emotionally inform men of things, but men should be the ones to make the majority of the decisions. You know, the important decisions. And it's been this way for a long time. And you know what? I understand that there are reasons why things have been this way for a long time. But we don't live in a time where those things are necessary anymore. You know, we're no longer bound by those things, so we shouldn't expect it out of everyone. I mean, if, if you want to live that way, fine. But don't cram that down everyone else's throats. You know, I guess I suppose I should feel sorry for the men who have those traditional values. You know, it's going to be harder and harder as time goes on for those kinds of men to find girlfriends. Oh well, right? Anyway, the golden years of being able to verbally be as mean and cruel as you want without consequences are coming to an end. You're right. You've lost the culture war. Kids are going to be taught things in public schools that go against your religion. And your only real way of being able to do anything about it is to take your kids either to private schools or homeschool them. Your religion or traditional beliefs do not have a say in what gets taught in public schools. Public schools are not churches. They are not places of worship. They are places for people to learn. And teaching kids about different ways of people being able to get along with each other is a good thing. Teaching kids how we as a society can remove obstacles from marginalized groups is a good thing. At least if we're trying to prepare people for the future. You can get all huffy and puffy over that as you want, and it's not going to change anything. We're simply not going to teach traditional or religious values in public schools. And yes, schools are going to teach that negatively judging people for things they have no control of is cruel and hateful. Oh, how terrible. Let me get my miniature violin, right? You know, the actual intended message of that song from the uh, San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus was actually kind of true. You know, but as I said in that video, uh, this is the wrong way to go about it. You, uh, there's so many ways you could talk about that subject without saying, oh, you're coming for people's children, okay? It was just, it was just so stupid. But yes, there is an agenda being pushed by Hollywood and public schools and universities, you know, workplaces, most of media. And that agenda is to push that we shouldn't negatively judge people for things they have no control of, provided it's not hurting anyone. We shouldn't judge people's lifestyles if they're not hurting anyone. We shouldn't teach women to take a submissive role. And there are a lot of issues around race that are very complex and take a lot of effort and commitment to repair the damage so we can all move forward. And yes, doing this requires that we look at the history of this country accurately, without all the creepy religious nationalism mixed into it. If you want to claim that all of that stuff is just leftist propaganda and brainwashing, what do you have to counter it besides your religious beliefs or your traditional beliefs? What do you have? You know, maybe this is the time where you just start chanting USA, USA, you know, and just hope that people like me go away, right? Yes, you're losing power in a big way, and you're not liking it very much. Maybe you can go to another Trump rally so you can feel more powerful again, right? Now, it's obvious that many of you, and when I say you, I'm, I'm talking about the people that have these types of opinions. You know, maybe nobody even watching my video has these types of opinions. I don't know. But the kind of people I'm talking about on my video don't really want to see LGBT get normalized. You don't want anyone to view that as normal. Sure, you acknowledge our existence, but... You don't think people like me should be able to adopt. You don't think we should even be anywhere around children because you, you think we're some sort of threat to the traditional family, right? You know, I'm guessing that 
some of these same people probably didn't think that gay marriage should have been legalized at all. You know, they, they, they see it as the first step towards the destruction of the nuclear family, the traditional family. With the way that I see some people talking, I, I wouldn't doubt that they think we should go more towards what Russia did about LGBT, where, you know, it's, it's an anti-LGBT propaganda law, where you can't push anything publicly that's positive about LGBT. Yeah, you, you can be gay, but you, you can't talk about it positively in the public because if a ch your children could hear it and therefore um, that's, that's propaganda uh, towards children and, uh, and, you know. So there, there's people that think that what Russia did was the right thing. And, I, and I'm just... <sighs> now, I can... I still don't understand, the, like, what's the point of Drag Queen Story Hour? I still don't understand that, but whatever... But, you know, I, I think about how people are responding to there simply being a gay character on a children's show. Oh, the horror, right? I mean, it's not like they show people kissing. They're, they're not talking about anything sexual. It's just like, like what was it? On Arthur, there was, a, uh, there was a, a gay marriage. Barely anything was made about it, but, but the conservatives just made this big deal about it. Oh, no, you're, you're going to confuse the children. It's just like... Even just regular marriage. I mean, what, what does it mean to a child? I don't know. But is the traditional family losing its prominence? Yes. You're welcome to start a traditional family. Surely nobody is going to stop you. But the traditional family is not going to be held up as high as it used to be. That's not a personal attack, and that's not an attack on this country. Societies are ever-changing, and we cannot go back to an earlier period without becoming authoritarian. There's just no way. That's why the, the whole, you know, the MAGA thing, just, just, just the, the phrase by itself, make America great again. It's just like, um, we, socially, uh, we were never great. I mean, maybe financially we were doing good in the 50s, and there's a whole number of factors for that. But uh, socially, socially, we were never great. We've just, be, we've become better and better over the years. You know, but this entire notion of make America great again yeah, I mean, it, most people know, most people with a brain on their shoulders know that if you try to force society to go back to an earlier period, yeah, that's, that's authoritarian. You know, maybe you don't want to call it fascist. Okay, whatever. It's authoritarian. You can't, you can't deny that it's authoritarian. Or are you going to try to change that word so, so certain things just can never be talked about? I don't know. But things are likely to get a lot uglier, a lot worse before they get better. The MAGA people, the traditionalists, the religious zealots, the QAnoners, the bit shooters, you know, that whole side of things, they're likely to throw a huge tantrum sometime over the next year, year or two anyway. And if they do, it's going to be ugly. You know, it, it has the potential of making the 6th of January look like a walk in the park. Then again, maybe it will be a craptacular failure, and we'll all be able to look back at it and laugh. I don't know. But I do see something coming up. Let's hope it's not too bad, right? You know, they're so angry that they're losing social power. They're really, really angry that they're the ones being marginalized. They're so convinced that they're the real patriots that they can't see how unpatriotic and un-American they really are. Seriously, a big percentage of them would be totally fine with Trump being installed as president. It doesn't get any more undemocratic, unpatriotic, and un-American than that. You don't throw out the entire system just because your guy lost. Whether you have a chance of actually throwing out the system doesn't matter as much as whether you're trying to do it. It's just like January 6th. People had almost no chance of actually truly going through with an actual insurrection. But they were going to try anyway. Intentions matter. And I know that phrase pisses off a lot of people. Intentions matter. But they do. And what people protest and riot over matters as well. You cannot tell me that people rioting because their sports team lost or rioting because their political candidate lost is the same thing as people rioting because another unarmed black man was killed by police. 
sorry. You also cannot tell me that all the violence that precipitated last year and in somewhat into this year too, you know, over police brutality, you know, you can't tell me that those riots and that destruction was a threat to our democracy, but an attempted insurrection is not. Seriously, get that shit out of my face. You know, when it comes to people talking about January 6th, it's, it's either people saying that, oh, it was like a guided tour with a little extra damage, or it's saying, oh, the Democrats are at fault because they didn't increase security enough, or there's the notion that the FBI planned the whole thing. Or, of course, there's the notion that Antifa are the people that actually started the violence. It's also the notion that Trump had nothing to do with it. He didn't influence it at all. You know, no amount of cult... I mean, these are the same people who don't even think cult, uh, that Trump has a cult following. You know, the, but they, they think that Trump had nothing to do with the January 6th. Republicans had nothing to do with it. Nothing to see here. You know, it's something we should just all move on from. For Forget it ever happened, right? Like Aliens 3, right? Can you imagine how Republicans would have reacted if Democrats would have pulled this sort of thing after the 2016 election? Yeah, Democrats whined, they had protests, and they tried to make Trump look bad. You know, they, they continually blamed Russian propaganda, Russia, Russia, Russia. But it wasn't like this. Nobody noteworthy was ever trying to say that it was a fraudulent election. And they certainly weren't going to do anything about it. Those that did think it was a fraudulent election, they weren't going to try to do anything about it. Well, it was just like, this is what happens. You know, especially when the popular vote is different than the electoral vote, right? But we're just like, all right, well, this is, this is the way the system works. We didn't like it in 2000 either, but, you know. The entire notion that the way that Republicans have reacted to Trump losing is the same as the way that Democrats reacted to Hillary losing, it's just ridiculous. They're not even comparable. Have you ever met a Hillary cultist? Have you ever heard of one? Have you heard of anyone acting like one? Oh, oh no, uh, Hillary Clinton, she's, she's never done anything bad. Everything she says is right. Anything bad said about her is fake news. Have you ever heard anything even remotely like that? So those of you trying to compare what, what happened in 2016 to what happened in 2020. Yeah, fuck you. Heck, th there are some people that I've seen try to say that pretty much anyone that even expresses that they like Biden is proof that Biden has a cult following like Trump did. Yeah, what do you say to these people? What do you say to people who can't even admit that Trump has a cult following? What do you tell people who are that far removed from reality? Oh, well, we're just real patriots. Yeah, yeah, sure you are. Sure. Now, as I say that these different groups are going to throw a tantrum, if it ends up being in the form of either Trump or DeSantis winning in 2024, it could definitely mark a very dark period for America. People who are scared often make irrational choices. I mean, look how Biden won the primaries because people were scared of Bernie Sanders because they, they wanted someone safe. Oh, safe. Biden is so safe. You know, because people were afraid of Trump winning. So, you know, just anything that's safe, anything. So people went with Biden. But, you know, if right now all of, if so many of these right-wingers are scared of losing social power, and, and it's continuing to happen, they're losing more and more social power as time goes on, and the right stands together, then if we do get Trump or DeSantis in 2024, we're likely to see a whole bunch more people, awful, awful people come out of the woodwork. And we'll definitely see legislation that favors traditionalism, religion, and monoculturalism. Personally, I'd call that the rise of fascism, but whatever, it's awful. Authoritarianism trying to force this country socially to go back to an earlier period. Authoritarianism. Anyway, so again, to go back to the beginning of this video, you know, if you don't like someone's lifestyle or their appearance, you know, or, or, or something that they have no control of, why can't you just keep it to yourself? Why do you think other people's lifestyles are your business? You're most certainly not being oppressed 
when society no longer allows you to tell people that they're abominations and degenerates. That's not oppression. And yeah, I've said that before because it needs to be said over and over and over again because some people just don't seem to get it. And let's be perfectly clear. There is absolutely nothing positive out of criticizing people for having lifestyles you disagree with. I mean, unless they're actually hurting people. But if your idea of hurting people is that God doesn't like it, then yeah, keep that shit to yourself. You know, there is nothing positive to come out of telling people that they're degenerates or abominations. Nothing. I mean, maybe you've convinced yourself that if you make people feel bad in the name of God, that God will reward you or something. I certainly know I wouldn't want to worship a God that, that does things like that. But whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching.